Good evening, everybody. How are we doing today? We're good? All right, that's a little muted. I think we can like, get a little bit more energy in here, but I'll leave. that's fine. It's raining. You're in the right place, honestly, with this type of weather. You're in for real treat with this film. My name is Amanda Salazar. I am Senior Programmer of Narrative Features here at the festival. I think I've seen many of you before at many screenings. You've seen me introduced probably quite a bit. Um, and if not, hello for the first time. Uh, and welcome to the 27th Annual Sonoma International Film Festival. I am so excited for this screening today, as you're going to hear me talk a little bit more and rave some more about it. Um, but before I do, I would like to thank a few people and organizations that have helped us and make sure that we can do what we do best. I'd like to first give a big thank you to Delta Airlines and also KHR and McNeely Family Fund for their continued support of what we do here at the festival. Um, I would like to also give a special shout out and bring someone up specially, um, one of our venue partners here and venue sponsors, Farm Fresh to You. So please join me in welcoming Wendy to say a few fruitful words. Hi everybody. Um, hopefully you guys got some of the fresh fruit outside in the front that came from our farm. We're an organic family farm, second generation run in the Cape Valley, which is west of Sacramento. We partner with organic farms up and down the West Coast. We deliver your produce from the farm to your doorstep. What we're trying to do is cut out the middleman, the money goes to the farmers that way, and you're getting super healthy, fresh produce. Our service is fully customizable from what you order, how often you order, what type of box you order. Um, so it's super customer friendly, and as I said, you're just getting really good, yummy produce. I have a great display out in the kitchen. I'd love to tell you more about our service after the movie. Please come see me and see some of the other things. We do have additional farm products, eggs, meat, dairy, nuts, grains, honeys. So you basically can get all your shopping done, except maybe toilet paper, um, uh, by having it delivered from the farmers and the artisans. Um, three people tonight um, have a $37 gift certificate for one free box underneath your seat. So. Check under your seat, and if you did win that gift certificate, please come see me. I can set up your account. You are getting 20% off ongoing for the event this week. So every time you order, you'll get 20% off. Right. And whoever won is getting $37 of produce for free as well. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. I always like to say now, I mean, you come to this venue, and it's a raffle every screening. So keep coming back to Andrews Hall. It's a great venue. Um, so yes, for those of you that won, please see Wendy afterwards. I would like to continue saying a few thank yous, which is to first of all thank our incredibly supportive board um, for what they do and supporting us creatively um, and really helping uplift the festival. I would like to give a big thank you to the venue managers here specifically, to a uh, shout out to Allison and Dana for running a great venue, and a big thank you to our volunteers. So thank you all. <laughs> Now on to the film. So this film, as I mentioned, you probably can maybe sense it. My energy is lifted. I really, really connected personally with this film. And I'm so excited that we actually have the filmmakers here tonight. So Ghostlight premiered at Sundance Film Festival just a couple of months ago. Um, and I think I just want to leave you with the fact that this is a, it's a family story, as you're going to see. It's very grounded in like an emotional truth that I think you're going to all witness. and. Of course, it's like woven through with a wonderful through line of Shakespeare with a lot of humor and heart. So I won't say anything else, but I would like to be joined on stage by the two filmmakers that are going to be in conversation with me afterwards to say a few words and welcome you. So please join me in welcoming the co-directors, Kelly O'Sullivan and Alex Thompson. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for missing Bo Bridges for this. <laughs> We're so excited to be here. I have a lot of family in the Bay Area, family in Sonoma, in the outer Richmond, so I'm, I'm very excited. I'm so thrilled to, to come here. And, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll be here after. Uh, thank you to the programmers and to the festival for having us, and we'll do a Q&A, so stick around. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thank you. All right, let's silence those cell phones and put them away, and make sure, oh, you can tell yourself how to vote, oh, you know how to vote probably at this point. You, um, on your way out, but with that, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We'll see you after. Okay, there's one, they don't, 
seem on, but it's a small venue. Um, and I can't see you at all with these lights, but please join me in welcoming back to the stage Kelly O'Sullivan and Alex Thompson. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start with a couple of questions, and we might have time for a couple from the audience, but they'll also be around a little bit afterwards if you'd like to talk to these wonderful filmmakers. So, kind of given the fact that you're the writer of this film, can you tell us where the story began for you? Yeah, um, I, for St. Francis, which was our previous film, I had never written anything before, and it was kind of wandery, and I had read some reviews that were like, yeah, it's kind of wandery. And I was like, ooh, okay, I need to research structure. <laughs> and I uh, was looking up the hero's journey, and I, Alex was in LA editing another film, and as I was looking up the hero's journey, this idea of a man having to face the call of something, denying the call, and then following it, came to mind, and I had just seen a trailer for the National Theater had done a production of Romeo and Juliet during the pandemic, yeah. and I was feeling lonely during the pandemic and was thinking about community, and I'm a theater actor, and so I was thinking about the theater community, and all of those things kind of converged into one idea yeah. of taking a hero's journey, starting with a Midwestern construction worker, who is an unlikely hero, I think. Yeah. Well, can you expand a little bit more on that, too? Like, that unlikely <laughs> hero and, and that inspiration a little bit more? Yeah, I was thinking about characters sort of like um, my dad, like people who've been discouraged from expressing emotion, um, sort of a generation of man, and thinking what would happen if he really needed to express emotion. A very quiet man he wouldn't think much of, we all like pass you know, on a daily basis, and then thinking, what if he was given the opportunity and a real need to express himself and then got to you know, live a life vicariously on stage and thinking, who's the least likely person to join a community theater? Yeah. Probably my dad. Yeah. <laughs> and then being like, and what would it be like if you got to? Yeah, that's really wonderful. So then Alex, again, I, I do feel like there, we, I want to reference that the, your, your collaborators for, and had made a, a previous feature, which you just mentioned, St. Francis, which is incredible, and you should see it, and it stars you in the leading role. Um, oh, and also there's another lead as well. Um, but speaking of that collaboration, when Script, working on the script, can you talk about what maybe spoke to you the most as the director? Like, what did you see first when you when you read it, and and then again doing a co-directing, like where you guys then worked together and what that was like? Yeah. Well, I, I was as Kelly said, I was editing a feature, and I remember this happened with St. Francis, where I was working on a script. I read like nine pages of St. Francis, and I was like, well, this is a lot better than what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> we should do this. And I was editing this feature, and as we were, you know, you sort of are you're troubleshooting, you're trying to fix things, you've already done it. I got this text from Kelly that was just like a long paragraph that was like, what about this, a construction worker? Basically described the plot of Ghostly. And I just turned to the, I read it out loud to the editor, and he's like, oh, that's really good. And I think the, the, the same thought came to mind as did with St. Francis, which was, there's so much potential in the story, getting out of the way of it so that we don't sort of overplay the circumstance. Yeah. And sort of having faith in the fact that the story is really solid, that these characters will be really solid, because I think something we, we work together on a lot is we, we kind of try to avoid like affectation in our work. You know, um, I think sometimes it's hard when you're playing with sentimental themes. If you're leaning into it too much, the audience is going to reject it. You know, they're not open to it. They're going to be like, well, that's just, that's schmaltz and that's vague. And so the first thing I saw was just the potential to show someone who feels genuinely grounded and genuinely goes through this experience. Um, and that that would be probably very, very rewarding for an audience. So, yeah. And then maybe, yeah, could you then maybe expand on co directing? What's that like? What's that process like for you two? What is it like? Uh, well, we are partners in life as well. We have a three-month-old baby, and so I was eight months pregnant when we were filming this. And so it's interesting to be just collaborating in all different kinds of ways. Um, but it's, it's, really, it's really nice because you always have somebody to, when you're unsure of something, to turn to and be like, is this crazy? What do you think? And I really trust Alex so much 
Um, and there were plenty of times that I didn't know how to do something and he did, or vice versa. And um, it's also really nice because we're able to then celebrate the poem together. Like we're able to come and, and do this. And uh, it was a family affair. The, the family in the film is a real family. Um, and so then we were making a family as we were making the film and there was a little, you know, there was some magic in that, some alchemy of, I think you can feel it, you can feel the familiarity in the film. And I, would, I think that leads into my next question, which is specifically about your actors and the family. And I know a little bit of that backstory, but clearly maybe the audience didn't. So could you expand on finding the family? And then also, I guess, because you also have, you know, come from an acting background, is that separation of like, this is fiction, but it's also not. You know, there's yeah. the, and how as directors, and by not being fiction, just the fact that there is a relationship there, and they're, they're playing characters, but it's yeah. probably coming from a very personal place. Could you also maybe expand on how to work with actors in that way, to get a universal story, but really playing off of the strengths of their familiarity with each other? Yeah, for us, we just wanted to get out of their way, because that is their family dynamic. Um, and many times before the camera started rolling, we would just be watching them. You know, we had our little headphones on and we'd hear their conversations and we'd be like, can you start rolling? And then can you guys just say that again? And so there was something really fun about harnessing that. And they, you know, they would certainly say that they're very different from their characters and they are, but also they're not. <laughs> um, and so some of the time it was about saying, can you play this a little closer to you? Um, because we hired them knowing who they are as people, and I think sometimes actors want to have a certain separation from their characters, which can be really important, but sometimes you just want them to bring themselves. And they were able to do both. They were able to, at moments when they needed to, distance themselves from it, but then also really bring themselves to the table. And then do you want to talk about how we found them? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Keith, so Keith, Kelly and I have known for a long time. Kelly was in a show with Keith called The Humans, uh, at ATC in Chicago, which went on to Broadway, without them, unfortunately, for all of us. Um, but, um, so we both, Keith is, in, Keith is this good on stage, you know, several times a year in Chicago, yeah. but is rarely, that never has a role like this. Um, and so we knew that, Kelly knew that she wanted to write this for Keith, and that was always the idea. We actually thought, like, who, who are like the A-list sort of actors who could do this? And we genuinely couldn't think of anyone better than yeah. Keith. Um, and then Keith, after a reading, which we do a lot of readings, Keith reached out and was like, my, my daughter would kill me if I didn't say, she'd love to be considered for the role, can, can she audition? And we don't, we don't do too many auditions, and so we asked her to come to the next reading. And she was awesome, she thought she did a terrible job. Actually, like at the you know, break before feedback, yeah. I really, like, saw her with her dad being like, I fucked up, I'm terrible. And I was like, oh, well, that's Daisy, uh, that's Daisy right there. Um, and then it just sort of was like, oh, well, Tara is amazing and um, is a sort of stalwart of the theater community. And, and it became a no-brainer. It, it was like important that we not cast the three of them as a sort of gimmick um, in any way. It, each of them would have been cast, as you saw, individually, you know, based on their merits. But, um, yeah, it was Well, then, maybe kind of taking a turn from fun, I'm just so curious about how the set was, or, or how you were able to like work with them. Again, I just want to continue to compliment you both on creating such a real, grounded story. I think your choice in actors are, is incredible, are incredible, and I think that's what makes the movie really shine. It just feels like we can see ourselves in this family in so many ways. This is all circling around to like a really intense tragedy, and so I'm curious if you could you know, talk about that, how you would work with the team on, the film does such a good job of kind of like getting us towards it and then moving away from it and not oversharing. And I think that's such an incredible choice in how, in how the structure of the film. So could you just talk about, again, maybe the process when you were writing that and the, the thought around that and then also what that was like on set and working with the actors to kind of go there. Because there's these moments where they're, you can see it in, without words, and then they kind of pull away from the emotional hook of it. Yeah. Well, a big inspiration for me was Manchester by the Sea. 
Um, and I don't know if you've seen that film, but there's a major tragedy in the middle of it, and the way that it doles out the information, for a lot of it, you don't really know what has happened. You're sort of meeting this character in the aftermath, and you're putting together what happened, and I really loved that. I found that it, it kept me on the edge of my seat, and you never got a chance to have, be like, oh God, can we just be done with it, because you're learning slowly. Um, and so for me, it was about creating that and then adding in the humor. It's like Manchester by the Sea means waiting for Guffman, yeah. where you can also celebrate this world of community theater, which has so much humor and so much art. And we never wanted it to be just a tragedy. Sort of the, the ethos of the film is the combo of that tragedy and comedy mask right next to each other, where it should feel like it's everything, it's both of those things all at once all the time, because that's the way life feels to me, that it's like in the most inappropriate situation, something funny will happen and vice versa. And so wanting to make sure that you never just become like, oh, life is punishment, um, by having real moments of connectivity and joy and humor throughout. And then on set, I think, you know, you what you see in the film is what we saw on set. So what you see from Keith and Tara and Catherine and everyone, that's what we were seeing in the monitor. And so oftentimes, we basically were just trying to judge what we saw every take. Um, rather than, we'd have conversations outside of that, but the biggest sort of intention that we bring to every single take, whether it was funny or sad or whatever, was just trying to find the honesty in it. Um, so I think what I love about it is that Keith, Keith took really seriously the mission that Dan is keeping something back <coughs> until the final scene. And then in the final scene, he's not just letting go, He's actually like living through a memory, living through a moment that never happened. Right. He never got to hold his son and say, I love you, in, in those words in that way. Yeah. And um, and he took that so seriously. Like in the deposition scene, I think one of my favorite moments in the editing room, I was, I, I was not like the most attentive director during the deposition scene. Because it's the same thing over and over for like 10 or, 10 or 12 shots, 10 or 12 setups. And it's good every time. And eventually I was just like, okay, well, this is just going to be a great editing experience because everything's good. But I noticed that Keith would always hold back when he said, um, like he did as a kid. I don't remember this moment. Yeah, it's um, sitting on the trampoline. Sitting on the trampoline like he would like a kid. And I remember on the day thinking, man, he, he really just can't go there. Like, no, no joke, like, so stupid. I was like, wow, Keith just can't go there in this moment. Like, that's too bad, but, you know, we have nine other takes. And in the film, you realize, like, no, he can't. Like, he can't. Of course he can't. Yeah, he, he can't because the going there is in the performance. Yeah. yeah. And so the, we were just so lucky to work with actors who I think really understood the yeah. That, like, they didn't play for laughs. They didn't play for tears. They played for what felt real to them. And usually, that's what felt real on the monitor. So, yeah. Well, I think we have time for maybe a couple of questions, if anyone has one. We also, oh yeah, we'll take this, this question. Go for it. Um, I'm curious about the community theater background a lot. My wife and I run the theater that's in this space. Oh um, so I love that element of, uh, of the film, and I thought we had a spot on. Oh, thank you. Yeah, both Alex and I are theater nerds. Um, I grew up in Arkansas and started doing theater at the Children's Theater there, and so it's been a huge part of my life ever since then. And you know, did it all through high school, and we do. I, you know, I did a lot of like tiny black box theater in Chicago, and so all of that is pulled from very real experience, like all of those exercises, um, the acting techniques. Like I teach that provocative questions exercise, the Meisner technique, and so it was really fun as I was writing this to get to be like a love letter, just writing a love letter to especially smaller theaters where you don't get paid a lot and where you're not in it for the fame where it's just about this community of people making something because they really love it and they really believe in it. And so, um, yeah, it's like my, fa my favorite scenes in this movie are that ensemble of characters um, because it's pulled very much from people I love. Yes, was it this location? Well, uh, we shot a lot in Waukegan, Illinois. So wa Waukegan and Highland Park, Illinois, and Highwood. North suburbs of Chicago. Yeah, the North suburbs, yeah. All right, last question. Has your daughter, what kind of acting experience with your daughter? Asked about the acting experience with the daughter. 
Yeah, so Catherine uh, Malcuffer was in, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. She was one of the, the, the friends in the group. Um, but Matt, she's not had a whole lot of. No, it's so funny. She like can't get cast in her high school plays. Yeah. <laughs> she was always like an ensemble member. And as soon as she told us that, we were like, what is wrong with them? Um, but you know, both of her parents are these incredible actors. And so she does like readings at her mom's theater. At her mom's theater. But yeah, it's so, she's grown up around it, but she's always like, yeah, my high school, I'm ensemble member number three. I'm just like, you're a star. That's so good. She was, uh, she told, she did an interview at Screen Rant and was like, well, guess what? I'm singing backup this week. <laughs> and we're like, oh, but they'll know. They'll learn sooner. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you both so much for coming to Sonoma and sharing this incredible film with us. Um, like I said, it's, I, it really touched me very personally, so um, thank you for this experience. I hope you all had a wonderful experience watching it. Please tell your friends, it's just tomorrow morning, right here again, 10 in the morning, and you should hope. Thank you again. Thank you, guys. Thanks for filming.